In India, a group of female wrestlers exposed the systemic harassment of women by the head of the Wrestling Federation of India and have been struggling for months for putting him on trial. In a country where there is rampant gender inequality, widespread violence against the women and early marriages, frequent violations of women's rights, the female wrestlers continue their struggle in legal and public spheres despite the government's dismissal of their quest for justice. And there it is, victory for Sakshi Malik of India. In Georgia, a bill was prepared for obliging any organization receiving over 20% of its funding from abroad to register themselves as a foreign agent's law. <laughs> and imposing a heavy fine for failing to do so, the people of Georgia took to the streets to protest against the enactment of this anti-democratic bill against restrictions on civil society activities and the silencing of free media. Since 2019, We Want to Live Together initiative from Turkey has been amplifying the voice of the migrants against the backdrop of deep poverty and rights violations they experience, as well as ever-increasing racist threats and hate speech. Göçmen çocuklar sömürüye maruz bırakılmakta, çocuk yaşta erken ve zorla evlendirilmekte, birçok içimde istismar edilmekte ve hatta yine gibi katledilmekte. The initiative made up of volunteers continues to stand in solidarity with targeted migrants under the mantra of a world free from borders, exploitation and exile. In Israel, mass public protests started in January right after the announcement of a draft reform package that would drastically impact the independence of the judiciary. The judicial reform package includes various amendments such as limitation of the powers of the Supreme Court as well as granting the executive branch a greater say in the appointment of the members of the judiciary. Reactions against the reform package culminated with the participation of protesters from different walks of life in various cities and evolved into weekly countrywide protest action. In Indonesia, Sri Iriangingsi and Sri Rosiati, both in their 70s, have been working for more than four decades to combat income inequality and to enable children to take part in the society by acquiring skills. In a country where the majority of the society work in low-paid and precarious jobs and lack equal access to education, they started a school for the children of poor families and have been striving to create a better future for these children. In Turkey's Diyarbakir province, Baglar district, male stall holders attempted to hinder a project aiming at encouraging women, subjected to violence and affected by economic inequalities, to open stalls at a marketplace. The female stall holders resisted and started to keep watch, not be stripped of their allocated spots. They continue their resistance and voice their call. These spots have been designated particularly for women. We shall not relinquish our space to men. They should not cast their eyes on our bread. In the United Kingdom, the Public Order Bill was proposed to expand the powers of police in stop and search operations of citizens as well as in preventing protests. According to human rights defenders and the public at large, such an amendment would be tantamount to interference in the right to protest and they are concerned about the limitation of freedoms. Protests and public reaction against the proposed amendment are still ongoing.
Due to a decree allowing the building of organized industrial zones on agricultural lands in Chambuku village of Amasya province in Turkey, the villagers' cultivated lands, as well as walnut and apple trees, were destroyed by bulldozers. Despite the intervention by the gendarmerie forces, the villagers continued their firm resistance for months and ultimately won. The court delivered its final decision on the cancellation of the project. In Brazil, Alessandra Corap has been waging a very long fight for protecting the lands of the Mundruku indigenous community against the destruction from mining activities. Particularly by drawing attention to the health risks associated with mining, Corap organized the local community despite all the obstacles and secured Anglo-American company to withdraw its 27 applications for mine exploration, marking a rare triumph in the historic struggle of indigenous peoples. In Cyprus, a bicommunal pride parade was held for the first time in the buffer zone under the control of the United Nations. In previous years, there would be separate pride marches on both sides of the Green Line, whereas this year's pride knew no boundaries. The marchers raised their demands for public participation in the peace process, calling for a multicultural and unified island. In France, Les Oletants des Banques Publiques, Magic Maman, and COFAM launched a joint campaign Uncover in support of normalizing breastfeeding in the public sphere. As part of their campaign, they designed a magazine that makes the reader seen as a breastfeeding woman as they open the cover page. The campaign magazine has been disseminated in many big cities of France, reaching out to millions. In Turkey, the locals keeping watch against cutting of trees for coal extraction and expansion of mining sites in the Akbelen forest in Milas continue their vigil with tents for more than two years. Despite winning numerous legal battles, a new regulation opened the olive groves to mining and the company started its logging activities. Villagers of Ikizkoi and environment defenders continue their resistance to protect the 200-year-old forest. <laughs> We cordially express our gratitude to all volunteers, civil society organizations, search and rescue teams from Turkey and around the globe who, in the wake of the devastating earthquakes that directly affected 10 cities and claimed so many lives, rushed to our country, made great efforts to touch the lives of each living being, showed their solidarity resolutely and patiently. We salute and stand in solidarity with everyone who continued to spare no efforts to enable earthquake survivors access their fundamental rights to housing, water, and education.